Well, hello there. I hope you're doing really, really well. I thought I was done for Christmas, and then I realized that I'd left my hard drives here at the studio, and I came back in to collect them on a miserable day. It's raining really hard outside. And then I thought, I don't want to just come in and then leave, and also I didn't really get to say goodbye to you guys. So I thought I would mash it all together into some kind of thoughts on the end of the year type video, and, um, and in the process, play some lovely Christmas songs. Um, so I'm gonna start with, actually, is this the Christmas song? I think it might be. For me personally, it's been, it's been a great year. There's been lots of ups, few downs, but you know, that's, that's the way it goes. And, um, and generally I'm really excited to kind of carry this momentum that I've been building over the last couple of years into the next year and see what comes up. Um, I've had so many projects kind of on the go this year and it's been great and really exciting, but I think it's made my year feel a little bit strange because I can't quite put my finger on what I started and what I finished other than a couple of smaller projects. But something I've realized over the last couple of years is just how long it takes for some of these projects to come to fruition. Um, and so I'm, I'm patiently waiting because I think there's going to be an amazing sense of relief once some of these things come out. And I'd love to share with you what I can of those projects once they come out. But some really, really exciting things to look forward to for next year. And it's already shaping up to be a very busy year, which I'm excited about. Of course, this year I finished my soft string textures library, which I'm incredibly proud of. And um, and you can continue to get it at a sale price at the moment. There's a winter sale at Spitfire Audio, and you'll be able to get that at an unprecedented discount, um, which is really, really amazing. I think for me personally, the one thing that I'm kind of kicking myself about is that I didn't manage to release any of my own music this year. I think next year I'm going to, I'm really gonna prioritize it because I had a collaborator reach out to me yesterday and they said, have you got any music of your own that you can link to? Because I really want to see what you sound like. And I used to put albums out so prolifically when I was at university, I just didn't really care too much about it. It was just this steady stream. And I think you have to always be making stuff of your own in order to be in touch with your own voice. I've heard about rappers and other artists who are constantly walking around with a, a sketch pad and that can help them, you know, just always keep that muscle flexed. Obviously, I'm always working on arrangements and productions, but to be able to write my own music, I think is quite important. And um, that's definitely something that I'm gonna be doing a lot more of for other projects next year. I'm gonna be doing a lot more of kind of composition work. Um, but as far as my own sort of unique music output, I definitely want to release an album next year and I'd be very disappointed with myself if I don't manage to do that. I arranged and produced the finale for this year's Royal Variety Show. We did Sing with Andrew Lloyd Webber, Gareth Malone and Gary Barlow, which by the time you're seeing this has just aired. If you're in the UK, it's very easy to watch. I'll, I'll leave the link down below. And that was really, really exciting because it was my first ever TV appearance. I actually got to conduct the orchestra. So if you watch it, it's right at the very, very end of the show, but you can see me conducting the orchestra at the bottom. And um, it's just a little moment of glory to be like, that was me, I was there, I did that. But yeah, I mean, generally I'm just excited to make more sample libraries next year, put out more music. And then I guess the other thing is this YouTube channel, which has been a sort of up and down journey for me. Like it takes a lot to put these videos out and for me to carve out the time. I know that it's really important. I know that gaining these subscribers ultimately gets me more work in other areas. Um, and also it's a nice way for me to focus on my own stuff for a change because as I said before, I'm always working on other people's projects. So it's quite nice to have this sort of one-on-one -on -one dialogue um, with the audience. Now what the future of this YouTube channel is, I don't know, but I'm excited to take you along the way. I think what was so good about that little unveiling video I did for the uh, Soft String Textures Library is just taking you along for the ride. I was so glad to have filmed some of those really amazing moments. And um, I definitely want to be a bit more kind of uh, liberal with having my camera out and filming more things because I think it, it's ultimately just nice to look back on things. I've kind of got a bit of a format that I want to play with next year, and I think once I can get into that slightly more steady format, I think I'm going to be able to do a much better job at delivering these more consistently.
I'm not sure I formally introduced this to you yet. This is the Zoom F2 field recorder. It's really good, battery operated, runs on a micro SD card, and records at 32 bits, so you don't have to worry about input levels. I've got something in the post today. There are a few rules for life that I think are quite true. One, better safe than sorry. Two, communication is key. Three, practice makes better. And I guess a fourth would be consistency is everything. Definitely when it comes to growing a YouTube channel. And unfortunately, I have been pretty rubbish at staying consistent. But the reason why is because I've actually been very busy as a composer. I've moved house, I've got a new setup at home, and that's what this is about. For me, having access to a second Apollo interface means that I'm gonna be able to do the same work that I get to do normally here, but I'm gonna be able to do it at home as well. And, you know, I did try. I bought a Focusrite Claret Plus and had all the inputs I could ever need and I was very excited about it. But I think when you're so used to a particular sound, it feels weird to be jumping between systems. So I'm hoping that this will become my new at the studio setup and then my system with the Apollo Twin can become my at-home setup. Oh, you're joking. UAD, if you're going to sell a Thunderbolt interface, why did you not put a Thunderbolt cable in the box? I took advantage of some Black Friday deals to buy a few new plugins, which are quite exciting. Um, one being the Hitsville Reverb by UAD. and also the Echo Rec by Pulsar. Lovely transitions, this. That distortion. Oh, beautiful. That, in fact, that's a lovely little bit of ear candy for a chorus, isn't it? love it, I really, really do. And you can drive it really hard, and if you add the feedback as well... Another great little bit of ear candy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little impromptu playthrough there. Um, I want to thank you all so much for your support this year. It's been absolutely incredible. We crossed 20,000 subscribers. I really can't believe there are 20,000 of you on the other side of this camera. Um, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already. Lots coming up next year. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a lovely Christmas or festive period. And um, yeah, let's get ready for a great 2023.